So I got a question today from John Rigdon, good name, solid name, and he had what I thought was relatively interesting, you know, not in terms of things in the world that might be interesting, this doesn't necessarily rate hugely, but in terms of things that you might see on my channel, I guess it figures is slightly interesting. Um, but there are other things in the world other than guitars and modelers. But I just mean to say I thought this is an interesting question for, for me anyway. Why is it that in my presets or in the preset I was showing on that video that I separate the amp and the cab? And if you look at basically any of my presets, you'll probably see this is the case. You've got an amp, you've got a cab, uh, you've got an amp, you've got a cab uh, here. This one's an exception. Um, and here's another exception, um, amp IR, so you get the, the idea though, right, so here again we've got an amp, cab, cab, amp. Now, there are a few reasons that I think this is a good idea, so let's just, I guess, start from something like Scratch. So when you first get your Helix or HX Stomp or whatever, I guess your first kind of instinct is going to be to go for this amp and cab block. And say you were to pull up something like the Line 6 Von 2 and you were to start playing some guitar. And you build yourself a preset around this and you discover there's some really cool reverbs. There's like this dynamic plate thing and uh, this one sounds particularly good. Um, and you discover, okay, well, there's also this little distortion thing here, uh, the Timmy, and this one sounds quite good too. If I put the clipping in the middle and I take the level down. Um, you, you make a, a change here or two go into the mids, you change the depth as well and you think, okay. You may even kind of create some snapshots. So you might go right on snapshot two, I actually want more gain. So I go to snapshot two, press and start to turn. And then on snapshot two, I'll have more drive. Um, and then, So I, I'm starting to really like this preset on Snapshot 3, for instance, I have that Timmy turned off. And then I think, oh, I've just seen online that someone has brought out an IR pack, you know, Own Hammer or someone like that. I really like their stuff or someone else has brought out some IRs and I want to try those. But you can't actually use it in this preset without losing all of these kind of features here because this model has the cab also baked in. So you could change the cab and this would maintain your amp settings. Um, so you could do some stuff and you'll see that it keeps the uh, snapshots and all of that stuff, but... But I can't maintain these settings if I want to bring in an IR. So what I then have to do would be to make a note of these settings or something and then just put them back in manually. So we go back and we put in a Von 2 um, here and then we bring in the cab and the single cab, whatever it was, it was the C12Q, where is it, 1 by 12 Anyway, you get what I mean, something like that and I might be back to where I was. I need to put in that snapshot aspect so that went up to 8, didn't it? I think I had the mids a bit higher and the depth a bit higher and I'd be somewhere back to where I started. And then I could also just change this out for an IR. So I could go in here and go, right, now I've got an IR that I really want to check out. So I go to 52. This is one that I like to use. But you see, you actually end up having a bit more flexibility without losing your settings if you keep it separate from the very start. Um, so this is, I think, best practice for this. The other reason you might want to do this is because you then can also run a dual cab. And I think this is something that I really recommend for 
basically any one, especially if you've got simple-ish presets like I tend to have. So I tend to run a 57 dynamic and something like this. And then if you go across, you've also got another cab. So you've got dual cabs and they go left and right. So on the other side, I might put a ribbon mic and you'll hear now, hopefully, that this has a bit of a different sound, a bit more complex. <laughs> Than if I was to just have the single Kelly Lead 80 with the 57. So that's a thing you could do. The other thing you can do, so if you keep these separate, is that you've got space here where you could put in something like an EQ. So this is a thing that I'd started to do when I wanted to give a bit more heft to tones. So you put like a up to kind of 6 to 12 dB boost at around the 150 hertz mark. Yes, it's going to be boosting the low end. But you find that what you can do with that kind of thing is actually enhance kind of feel. And again, you've got your amp settings that are remaining unchanged here. And you could cycle through all of the cabs in whatever way you fancy or uh, if you had a certain sort of cab setting that you always went to. So, for instance, for me, something that I often would go for would be this. So, uh, where are you going? Cali V30, one inch away, 30 reflections and then same again 160 ribbon one inch away 30% and then what I could do if I press uh, action here I can add that to favorites that kind of cab setting add new favorite and then I've got a, a really easy way that I could just go if I have none there for the minute favorites and then I've got this cab setting, which I generally... And I can compare it to something like an IR a bit quicker. Um, so, again, as I say, with the amp and cabs, you won't be able to play IRs anyway, because you will have a cab always on. So those are the reasons that I like to keep the amp and the cab separate at all times essentially unless I need extra blocks if it's a particularly complex um, preset. If I'm wanting to use lots more effects I might just use a single cab instead of a dual cab but generally I find that I like the sound of a dual cab a little bit better as a bit more complex tone wise can be um, or you know of course you could use an IR but what I find is this gives you more flexibility. You can put a, a trick some people like to do is put a kinky boost in between the amp and the cab. Um, you could try this sort of thing uh, and see if you like the way that this sounds. So. <laughs> You know things like this that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do with a real amp but that for me is why I would recommend always pretty much running the amp and cab separate it's not for DSP reasons but it is for kind of best practice reasons it means you can change the cab and maintain any kind of complex settings snapshot wise and all that sort of stuff that you might have built into your preset already and that's about all there is to that Hopefully that answers that question. Feel free to ask any more you might have about 
Helix, HX Stormpool stuff. I don't get paid by Line 6 to make this stuff, but uh, hopefully it's helpful for one or two of you. That's my thoughts on that. I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers.